What is up, my bandit legions? Yeah. I suppose you think you've heard every story in the stars by now. Uh huh. Stories of war. Hope you're up for some weird stuff, Vault Hunter. Let's go. Our holy family's gonna yeah. tear the whole galaxy a new one. Mayday, yelling Mayday. Everybody better vacate from the gateway. Festivities are quite well in full swing. What more could the heart desire? Millions of DNA sequences that you can play and solve inside Borderlands 3. Apocalypse Party! We blow it up as home of the Hope you know what you're in for, Gunslinger. What's the worst that could happen? All aboard the pain wagon! Hey everybody, it's Randy. I'm the founder of Gearbox Entertainment. Wow, it's been a pretty wild year so far, but let me tell you, we've been on work from home at Gearbox since March. I am at Gearbox Studios right now. I'm the only one here because we've all been working from home, but we love PAX and we're so excited that PAX decided to do a digital event. So welcome to the Gearbox Entertainment main theater show at PAX Digital. Hey everybody. Hey Randy. hey Randy! Hey Randy! Hey Randy! Hey everybody! Hey Hello, Randy! Hello. Hey everybody! What's up? What is happening? Hey man! Hi. Hello! Well, hello! Hey y'all! How's, How's it going? going? Howdy! Hi! Hey everyone! Hey! Hello! Hi How there! Doing? How's everybody doing? Oh, hi! Hey! Good to see you! Hi! Howdy! Howdy everybody! Hello. What are you doing, hey, guys? How's it going? How's everybody doing? Good morning! Hey! All right, on behalf of everyone at the Gearbox Entertainment Company, thanks for being with us. We've got an awesome lineup of things to show you today, some really, really cool stuff. Obviously, you're gonna learn more about what, what's coming up for Borderlands, and we've got some new IP, that, new updates on products that we wanna tell you about from uh, the Gearbox Publishing uh, Group, and uh, some surprises along the way. But look, we like to start big, so we also like to bring some entertainment uh, to the show. We want to we wanna make sure that you guys have a good time. And with that, I know some of you guys are playing our newest add-on for Borderlands 3, Psycho Krieg and the Fantastic Fuster Collect, and the response has been overwhelming over the last couple of days. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for checking it out, and we thought it would be really, really fun to get the voice actors together from Borderlands, voice actors that are in the Psycho Krieg add-on, and to create a custom storyline, a custom script with our narrative team. So we've been in the writer's room working and we're just gonna see how this goes. We got our actors on deck and we're doing this remotely. Let's do a live reading for you guys. You ready? Let's check it out. That was awesome. Stop dying at me! Mass murder can often be a form of quality control. It's time to bleed! I shall be out directly. I like your style. Get out of my head! Yes, hello, this is Dr. Patricia Tannis. I am coming to you live from my lab, which I have not left for roughly six months. Not because I'm under quarantine or anything like that, it is simply that I despise human interaction, which is why I will not be turning on my camera. 
As for why I have brought you all here today, I wish to test a new device I have been tinkering with. It is a psychotranslator, which I believe will decipher psychobabble nonsense into something more sensible. To that end, I am hosting the first ever installment of Ask a Psycho. Now, allow me to introduce our guest of honor, the Crimson Raiders resident psycho, Krieg. Krieg? Are you there? Krieg, 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 you're muted. I hunger for the trard umbilical. Delightful. Now, let us see what the translation device has to say about that. Y'all, if I ain't ready for this here hootin' nanny, I'm a spit shine scared turd. Oops, I had it on the slack-jawed yokel setting. Let us try that again, shall we? Proper chuff to be invitated, Gavna. Nope, that's Dickensian street rat. Let's try this once more. I'm very happy to be here, Tannis. That's better. Now, I would like to open the floor to our other attendees. Does anyone have any burning questions for Krieg? Ah, yes, Marcus, I see you have your hand raised. That's right, I'm going first, and I'd like to see anybody try to stop me. So, Krieg, I gotta ask. Where you been, man? You used to be one of my best customers. Where the gut wrench turns against twisted shadows. I live in a cave now. Thanks for asking. Oh, bummer. Well, anyway, here's my real question. Crazy as I run Rusty buzz axes? Why don't I ever use gun? Do you have any idea how much my sales will be? Send guns to the dude? So fears withering strays of Mr. Faculties. It's hopeless. Fear death. Besides, buzz axes are fun. It is so much more satisfying to feel your way across your bare chest. Huh. Well, you crazy pants weirdo. Enjoy your cave. Wreaking savage havoc on the buttery yearning. The hearth burns brightest on the fat of foes. Terrible calamity sings wild at the severing of tendons. I will. Well, that was somewhat less than enlightening. Oh, sweet corpulent crap on a crosswalk. I just got a notification that Claptrap is waiting in the lobby. Who gave Claptrap the invite link? Hmm? Speak now, or there will be a sharp and technus-inducing reckoning! Nobody? <sighs> Fine. We'll just move on. Who else has a question for Krieg? Yes, Ellie. Please go ahead. Hey, y'all! Short-time listener, first-time caller. Yeah, what I want to know is, where do psychos get them orange pants y'all are so keen on? They're stylish as hell! Wherever the lungs are served, enormity and excess. Olaf's orange pants. Well, all right then. I may have to pay old Olaf a visit my own damn sale. Hey, Tannis, can I ask one more question? Oh, I suppose Marcus technically got to ask two, so it's only fair. Thanks, sweet cheeks. Never call me that again. You got it, sugar bits. Or that. Oh, fine. You're no fun. No. I am not. Thank you for noticing. So anyway, Craig, you are one sexy triangular hunk of sculpted man meat. I was wondering if you'd ever want to grab dinner and maybe... Sorry, Ellie, it seems like your connection is breaking up. We'll just have to move on. Who else has a question for Krieg? Yes, Sir Hammerlock, you may speak. H hello, hello, and wonderful to be part of this fascinating endeavor. I... Oh, all apologies. One moment, please. Yes, Winnie, what is it? I can't right now. I'm on the call. Wait, if she pees on you, pee right back. Show her who's in charge. Remember, you are the Alpha, darling. Terribly sorry. We adopted a rescue jabber, and Wainwright is learning the art of animal taming. Anyway, where was I? Uh, oh, yes, Krieg. I I've always been rather curious. What makes you different than other psychos? You've never tried to carve our faces off, or, uh, <laughs> despite your rantings and incomprehensible ravings, I find you possess a certain uh, quiet... Uh, 
a dignity lacking in others of your kind. The little man cries, wailing racks, feasting on carrion, questioned like a razor-sharp light. Error. Translation not found. Hmm. The free association complexity algorithm appears to have been overloaded. Oh well, thanks for playing, Hammerlock. Oh, oh, but you never answered the question. Oh, <laughs> not the divan! I, I uh, yield my time. Uh, Tally-ho! Well, we must keep this thing rolling. Anyone else? Ah, Maurice, our resident talking Saurian. What is on your mind? Hello? Maurice is speaking. You will tell him if he can be heard. Yes, Maurice, we can hear you. Good, good. Maurice is not skilled with human communication software. He prefers to sing the void scream, the chorus connecting all Saurians in a psychic ever-song. What is your question? Maurice wants to know if the Krieg ever feels alone, like an outsider, as though his blood brethren do not trust him and fear he could murder them at any moment, asking for a friend. Catawampus! Sometimes we all feel like we're on the periphery of our social circles. Like maybe the folks who would call themselves our friends forget to include us. But at the end of the day, it's up to us to be kind to ourselves. To be friends with ourselves. To accept ourselves for who we are, while striving to be better than we were yesterday. Catawampus. Maurice feels these words deep within his soul cavern. Yes, the Krieg is a prince among warm bloods. You will excuse Maurice. His weeping song is fatal if heard. Until next time. I'm afraid that is all we have time for today. Thank you all for coming. Krieg, do you have any final words for our audience? <laughs> I am the conductor of the poop train! I am the conductor of the poop train. Indeed. Once again, this is Dr. Patricia Tannis, signing off. That was great. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun to work on with the narrative team in our virtual writer's room. Listen, I'm going to be back in a little bit, but right now I want to introduce you to someone awesome who's going to tell us about all the great things happening in Gearbox Publishing. This is the president of Gearbox Publishing, Steve Gibson. I'm here to introduce you to my dad, Steve Gibson, president of Gearbox Publishing. I hope you like your games. <laughs> hey everyone, Steve Gibson here, president of Gearbox Publishing. We have been having the time of our lives here at Gearbox, working with all these wonderful game creators, helping them bring their games to market. I wanna take a moment to say thank you to each of them for making the choice to work with Gearbox and trusting us to do right by their games. First off, it was Sebastian and People Can Fly and their title Bulletstorm, thank you, Sebastian. That was followed up by Guillaume and Compulsion Games and their wonderful game, We Have a Few. Thank you, Guillaume. You guys probably remember us talking about Risk of Rain 2 and announcing the launch of that with Paul and Duncan of Hopu Games. Thank you, Paul and Duncan. You're gonna actually hear a little bit more from Paul later on in the show. But first up, you're gonna hear from Julian and Norseville Games and their fascinating game, Tribes of Midgard, coming out next year. And then you're going to hear from Keith and Counterplay Games and Godfall, which is looking amazing and it's right around the corner. Then we'll hear from Paul and what's up for Risk of Rain 2. Off to you there, Julian.
Hello everyone, this is Julien Maroda from Norsevel, Creative Director on Tribes of Midgard. Our team of 20 has been hard at work despite the quarantine. Um, it's a bit sad not to be at the studio, honestly, but we couldn't be happier of uh, where we are right now and of the trailer you just saw. So what is Tribes of Midgard and where does it take place? Well, first of all, it takes place at the beginning of Ragnarok. So that apocalypse where the gods and the giants fight an epic battle in the Norse mythology. You play as a human that's just been revived by the gods in order to defend the seed of Yggdrasil, the world tree. And the thing that's extremely important to understand right from the beginning is that this game is a brand new genre. It's a new type of game. So that makes it a bit challenging to explain sometimes, but also extremely rewarding and extremely fun to play. As you enter the world of Midgard, there's a lot of things to do. But first of all, you better just go out in the wild, explore, collect resources, go back to your village where the seed of Yggdrasil is located, craft better gear, better tools, awesome swords, uh, legendary equipment, all of that so that in the evening when an attack occurs on the village with those creatures from hell coming to attack your tree, you can help defend it directly. In the morning you can then go back to the wild, you can fortify that village, you can actually build anywhere in the world, you can raid caves, um, you can even specialize in one of the four classes we have, so a lot of things there. But one of the big, and I mean big, literally things happening in the game is that every couple of days a giant, a proper Jotun, will spawn in the world and march towards your village with the intent of destroying that seed. So you better take it down before it's too late, because otherwise it's game over. And the best in all of this is that you can play tribes completely solo, but you can also play it with up to 10 players as the game will uh, auto-scale automatically. You may have heard of the project uh, last year at PAX, uh, and actually we were at PAX East in 2019. So if you saw us there, you did not hallucinate, we were there. And I cannot stress enough how awesome our community has been with us uh, since the beginning of the development of the project. We did three closed alphas and three open betas and actually made it to the front page of Twitch. And that's all thanks to you, so thanks again. And if you want to be even more involved in the project, um, consider joining our Midgardian program from our website so that you're really uh, part of our team and helping us make the game as great as possible. That's it for me. I wish I had more time. I have many more things to tell you, but that's it. Uh, it'll have to be for a later date. We're super excited and proud to be working with Gearbox to bring you Tribes of Midgard uh, to PC and PS5 in 2021. If you like what you saw and want to keep updated about the project, consider wishlisting the game directly on Steam right now. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the show. Sail, sail. And this is my world. Okay, yeah, let me talk about Vaughn because that's easy. Yeah, talk about Vaughn. <laughs> um, Vaughn is a special boy who doesn't wear any clothes anymore except his tidy whities He's the only male character I worked on this game, so that's kind of funny to me because he's like the most naked. But <laughs> yeah, there was a drawing of him on the whiteboard where he's not wearing, even wearing his underwear. That's kind of become infamous and nobody is allowed to erase that drawing. Um, that was also a concept when I was working on him. People who didn't know about it would come by my desk and like do a double take and be like, is that Vaughn in his underwear? I'm like, yep. I mean, I didn't even have to do that much work as a concept artist to finish him. Yeah. <laughs> I like yep. the shiniest place. Yeah, there's like shines on there. <laughs> Yo, little help. <laughs> Under the scarab shell, all creation is shielded. Protect Apirion and ascend with Aegis Horn.
Hey everybody, my name is Keith Lee, and I'm the game director for Godfall. We just showcased one of Godfall's legendary armor sets, Aegis Horn, which calls forth spirit warrior allies to aid you in battle together with your friends. And you'll need all the help you can get because Godfall is challenging. We also hope you enjoyed the first look at Lunara, the final boss of the Water Realm. We're very fortunate to be launching alongside the PlayStation 5 this holiday season. And for all the PC players out there, you can head over to the Epic Game Store right now to pre-order Godfall and be one of the first to receive it this holiday season. Working with Sony and Epic Games has made Godfall the best that it could be, so we are grateful for their help and support. And one last thing, we have a surprise for all the Borderlands fans watching the show today. Everyone, Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the show. Look everybody, it's Zero's sword. Man, that's hard to say. Zero's sword. Zero's sword. We should uh, think of a better name before we record this for real. What? We're rolling? Yeah, crap. Uh, it's super called Zero's sword. Pre-order Godfall to get it in game. Hey guys, I'm Paul Morse from Hopo Games. I just wanted to come on here and say thank you so much for your support during our time in Early Access, as well as the recent 1.0 launch update. I'm also very excited to announce that we're bringing Risk of Rain 2 to Google Stadia. We're putting out a blog post today that will cover the details of this, as well as our fall console update, and all the future updates we're bringing to Risk of Rain 2. You can find that on Twitter, Discord, and the Steam page as well. All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much again, and enjoy the rest of the show. Hey everyone, I've got a homeworld update for you. 
Many of you, I'm sure, recall Homeworld 3 was finally announced in collaboration with Blackbird Interactive based out of Canada. Rob and his team are doing fantastic work. We love sharing the updates with you. And in fact, there's a new update hitting the FIG page right about now that you can take a look at what's happening with the Homeworld 3 and the development there. Rob, thank you so much for the work you guys are doing. It is fantastic. Also happening in the Homeworld, we announced the Homeworld mobile game being developed by Stratosphere Games based out of Germany. That is also going really, really well. In fact, we're getting really close to doing our first round of closed technical testing, and we want to make sure to invite all the FIG backers to participate in that. So what you need to do today is go to homeworldmobile.com and take a look at the details, and you can sign up to be in that program. Go there now. We're waiting for you. Go! Go! And this is my world now. So originally I was tasked with making this burger that was just supposed to be for this mission where the players run and, you know, kind of deliver a burger delivery. And I made the burger and offhandedly in a meeting, someone said that might be used for a gun. Oh, okay. So originally this burger was for the Penn and Teller VR game because there's a, <laughs> there's a bit in it that uses a burger. And then once I got a task to be like, Hey, we need a burger. I'm like, I know what to do. <laughs> so I basically took that burger and then, uh, you know, made it work for Borderlands, um, which is crazy. And as you can see, they've made it as a pattern for a gun also. So. <laughs> What's up, Pax? What? Did you think I was gonna like put in effort for this or something? <laughs> I thought about it. Hair done. Fancy jacket. Wearing actual pants. But then I was like, why bother? Who cares? You don't care about me. You don't care about my impeccable wardrobe choices. I think that if you are still watching this and you haven't got up to go to the bathroom yet, you probably care about one, maybe two things. One, am I going to show you any new toys today? And Two, am I going to give anything away? So, to address point number one, yes, we do have some new stuff. first known Mr. Torg figure Explosions! ever. Here's a picture of it. I drew hearts on it because I love it. If you don't love it, apologize! So go check that out. And then our friends at Zavi.com who make this shirt are also launching a total fuster cluck full of new Creed themed products today. So go check that out too. Now, the second question, am I going to give anything away? Yes. Yes, I think I will. Yes, like Torg, fighting a shark, wearing a bolo tie. You may ask, who was wearing the bolo tie? You were the shark. Answer, yes. All right, one lucky winner is going to get a big Borderlands swag pack. In order to enter, you need to go to the Gearbox Loot Instagram account. That's at Gearbox Loot on Instagram. Give us a follow and comment on our giveaway post with your best guess as to how many Borderlands products you have seen in my segment today. At Gearbox Loot on Instagram. No, most of y'all are gonna be wrong. So, you're not gonna win that swag pack. Sorry. But, we did want to find something to help you deal with the absolute misery of failure. So, our friends over at PDP have decided to give away 500 of these Maliwan pistol replicas, like the one that I keep conveniently under my Claptrap wizard pillow. 500 of these, big number. That's right, you and 499 of your friends could each win one of these. Hey, this one has your name on it. In order to enter for that one, go over to the Gearbox Loot Instagram again, 
read all the details on the latest post. What I will tell you is this one is going to be an easy entry. Because as we all know, trying is hard. So yeah, this is uh, this is like my first kind of big system that I got to work on, um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. It just you know you boot it up, and then you have these targets that you know sort of come out, and you know you can shoot them. Just like oh, look at me being horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool, like you know, getting to work on stuff like this because you know it just comes out of an idea. Like we're in a meeting, and it's just like, oh, you know, what do we want to do for this? And then you sit down and you plan it out, and then you just build it. Like many iterations of like trying to see what works, the presentation, all of that stuff, getting effects involved, um, with just like you know, when you shoot a target, how does it explode? What does it look like? Um, stuff like that. And so it's it's just yeah, really cool to you know, kind of work on stuff like this. Um, and, you know, this stuff, like, you're going to be on Sanctuary a, a decent amount throughout the game. And so, you know, being able to even work on anything in Sanctuary is just, I think, pretty damn cool. And now, a word from our sponsor you won't want to miss. Pitchford, founder of Gearbox Entertainment and executive producer of Borderlands. Gearbox has partnered with Nerdvana Games and in collaboration with Lido Games to develop and create the official fantasy tabletop role-playing game, Bunkers and Badasses. Ever since Gearbox has gone to a work-from-home mode, we've actually left our empty facility in the hands of Nerdvana Games so the geniuses there can create and manufacture Bunkers and Badasses just for you. As you know, Bunkers and Badasses was originally created in the city of New Haven by acclaimed designer Greygax Perinia Davidson, and the game was so popular that you could find it in every Marcus Munitions outlet on Pandora. Unfortunately, here on Earth, used copies are impossible to come by, but Nirvana Games managed to acquire a copy from EchoBay.com, and it was a copy that was once owned by the world's deadliest teenager, Tiny Tina. Fortunately, Tina has agreed to let us reproduce her copy of the game. Isn't that right, Tina? Yeah! Of course that's right. Thank you, Tiny Tina, and thank you, Nerdvana Games. The Bunkers and Badasses tabletop role-playing game system begins with a beautiful, full-color, hardbound source book that contains all of the guides, information, loot tables, and scenarios necessary for Vault Hunters and for Bunker Masters to enjoy an awesome session of pen and paper gaming. The source book also contains several unique adventures, including the original printing of Assault on Dragon Keep, personally annotated by Tiny Tina herself. Also included is an all-new adventure called The Merchant's Quest for the Wizard's Wand and the never-before-published sequel to Dragon Keep called Butt Stallion's Honey Heist. Once these proofs are printed and approved by the editor, they will be manufactured with the best quality paper and the highest possible standards of book manufacturing. have a game of Bunkers and Badasses without dice, and the deluxe edition of Bunkers and Badasses includes a number of premium components, including custom-made, exclusive Bunkers and Badasses dice. The one-of-a-kind badass die is specially weighted to increase the chances of success when executing a badass move. 
What's a badass move? Well, you're going to have to read all about that in the rules when you get your own copy of the source book, which will come with the deluxe edition with the dice. Did I mention the dice are custom dice? Deluxe edition of Tiny Tina's Bunkers and Badasses includes a stack of exclusive gun cards that have key stats and cool art right at your fingertips. Once the technicians at Nerdvana Games figure out how to print these cards, they'll not only be useful, they'll be collectible. And that's fantastic. One of my favorite features of the deluxe edition of Tiny Tina's Bunkers and Badasses are the exclusive miniatures that come with the set. Animators with Nirvana Games with access to the actual models created here at Gearbox Software's state-of-the-art motion capture facility are pioneering new techniques to capture the most exciting action poses to be recreated as Bunkers and Badasses miniatures. The deluxe edition of the game contains 10 exclusive miniatures, including all of your favorite heroes and ball hunters from the Borderlands series. These miniatures have been expertly recreated in 28mm standard gaming scale, so they're perfectly compatible with all of your other miniatures or with other fantasy role-playing game systems. They have been produced with state-of-the-art 3D printing technology, and as you can see from zero here, they look absolutely Fantastic. Uh, that's acting. Shut up. Tiny Tina's Bunkers and Badasses began development in the before times and has been in playtesting and iteration throughout the year. That means that the playtesters at Nirvana Games have already proven Bunkers and Badasses to be the perfect game to play over the internet or with the most extreme standards of social distancing. So until such time that it's safe for you and your friends to get together again, Bunkers and Badasses can help you pass the time. The Bunkers and Badasses fantasy role-playing game system is a perfect way to spend an evening shooting skeletons and killing skags and hanging out with friends and soon-to-be enemies. Tiny Tina's Bunkers and Badasses is available right now for pre-order on nerdvonagames.com. Go to nerdvonagames.com and pre-order your copy of Bunkers and Badasses right now. Bunkers and Badasses fantasy role-playing game system, it's fantastic. Hey everyone, it's Graham from the Borderlands 3 live team. I'm excited to tell you all that we still have more in store for Borderlands 3. Later this year, you'll see another DLC, this time including new game modes, missions, and an additional skill tree for each of the Vault Hunters. We'll have a lot to talk about later, but for now, let's take a quick peek at Flak's new skill tree and pet. So a new skill tree means of course two things, new action skill ability and new pet. I'm proud to announce that Flak's new Trapper skill tree adds Hyperion Loader Bots as a pet. Loader Bots are range based pets, but eventually can be spec into more close quarters versions as you go down the tree. All loaders start as Ion Loaders. These are equipped with a Hyperion Shock Sniper Rifles. Their attack commands fire slow moving shock projectiles that can be shot, creating shock novas. Later in the tree, you can evolve the Ion Loader into a Bull Loader or even War Loader. Bull Loaders use a large shield and Hyperion Automatic Shotguns to get up close and personal. They feature a strong melee roundhouse attack and can even use their shield to knock enemies into the air. 
now the Deadly Warloaders. They pack incendiary Hyperion shotguns and can toss grenades. Their attack command uses rocket pods attached to their backs to fire homing missiles out onto the battlefield. You can even spec these guys to be exploder bots if you like. Now for the action skill of the Trapper Tree, the Gravity Snare. The Gravity Snare Trap tosses enemies into the air before slamming them back down into the ground. Any enemies caught in its radius will have their attacks interrupted, giving Flak a crowd control skill for the first time. We also wanted to address some feedback we had received from the community regarding Flak and their pet survivability. So you'll see an emphasis on shields in this tree. For example, the Better Toys passive ability gives Flak and their pets bonuses to recharge and recharge delay speeds on their shields. The Take This passive provides pets a duplicate of Flak's currently equipped shield. And the Fuzzy Math passive ability even restores a portion of Flak and their pets' shields when they land critical hits. Finally, the capstone for the Trapper Tree is Capacitance. This skill effectively doubles Flak's shield and immediately begins recharging it whenever they activate an action skill. So that's just a peek at Flak. We can't wait for everyone to get their hands on this skill tree. Hope you're up for some weird stuff, Vault Hunter. Hey everyone, we're not done talking about Borderlands yet. I'm Pat Finn, producer for Borderlands 3. And we are bringing Borderlands 3 to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Along with this, if you're a current gen player and you own the game on Xbox One, you'll get a free upgrade to Xbox Series X. And if you own it on PlayStation 4, you get a free upgrade to PlayStation 5. This includes all content, all saves. You'll be able to bring everything over from the last generation to the current. Along with this, this next generation will have the game running at 60 FPS in 4K in single player. The Borderlands have never looked better. And as a new feature for the first time in Borderlands 3, we'll be bringing four player split screen to the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Along with this, we'll be adding vertical split screen play to Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. In 2021, we are proud to announce that we're bringing crossplay to Borderlands 3. So no matter how you own it, you'll be able to play it with your friends. We're very excited about this next generation of consoles, and we can't wait to be playing in the Borderlands with you this holiday season. And this is my world now. There's a lot of cool stuff hidden in the graffiti, like, um, one of the other concept artists, Max Davenport, he did these like cool, very abstract graffiti. Um, but a lot of those are actually names of the developers like on oh, the art yeah. team. Um, then there's some just like random stuff like your donut or like Ellie have my babies and just yeah. like, there's a lot and I, I hope players can find them all. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the Ellie uh, sexy posters that mm -hmm. we made. Oh yeah. We made Ellie's model and, uh, and gave her, gave him some like, uh, what do you what do you call those? Uh, like pinup? Yeah, like yeah. pinup posters. Ellie has a series of pinup posters that you can find throughout the game. Yeah. They're they're wonderful. Every once in a while, we'll just send somebody a link to those, and they're like, oh my god. Yeah, that that's kind of one of the cool things, like getting towards the end of the the project, at least like on the art side, because you have more time, and we're like, all right, we need a bunch of posters. Everyone, come up with different stuff. So you yeah. get like the Ellie poster, um, or we have a bunch that are kind of like cool pieces of lore, um, like. Your Easter eggs poster. and shout up. The movie posters, yeah. We did it, you guys! We did it! That was it. That's the Gearbox Entertainment Main Theater Show at PAX Digital. And 
Wow, you know, I wish that we could all be together live like we used to, but now more than ever, the Gearbox team is pumped to do our absolute best to entertain you. And if you like some of the things you saw today or you want to learn more about what's going on at Gearbox, check out our website, gearboxsoftware.com, or you can follow me on Twitter, at Duval Magic. So awesome spending time with you guys. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for hanging with us, and we'll see you soon. Check, check, one, two. Three, two, one. No, I'm just trying to see which angle that is. Okay. Take two. Bunkers and badasses. I'm not even anywhere near a position. Let's do this again. Thank you, Maurice, a second. He runs out of air if you squish him. These things are like comically flimsy. That includes lots of premium com components, including me starting over again because I can't <laughs> talk and it's all over my words. Would you do me a favor? Would you mind saying that just one more time? Sorry. <laughs> There, there was, there was just one thing there. I would, I would I just, just edit over it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start that over. <laughs> In 2021, we will be adding crossplay to the Borderlands 3 across all platforms. <laughs> oh, oh my god. All right. Uh now I'm panicking. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The deluxe edition of the game contains 10 Maurice is deflating, hang on a moment. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Action. The deluxe edition of the game contains 10 exclusive miniatures. Would you stop praying? Maurice wants to know if the Krieg ever feels alone, like an outsider. You guys want to, you want to tell everybody what... Ah, thank you everyone for your time. We look forward to... Ah. See what happened. <laughs> I start talking, and Dylan does this. <laughs> As though his brood brethren do not trust him. And he's so deflated. <laughs> Give me a minute, I think I think he's sprung a leak somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your time. We look forward to smirking now. <laughs> Okay, okay, cut. We're all broken. Hold on. Hello everyone, I am Alexey Pajitner, creator of Tetris. My friend that Sega have invited me here to